I was pretty upset. You would be pretty upset. <laughs> the two months that I took of deciding what I was gonna do with it, I was pretty down. I, there was a point where I just wanted to not even deal with it, not have one like ever again, just cause I just, if this thing happened again to me, I don't know what I would do. Caprizas, and this is my 97 Toyota Supra. I didn't really think I would get to the point that I'm at right now, but a lot of events happen in. <laughs> Had the car for about six years. I got in March of 2013. Actually, an ad on Craigslist that a buddy of mine Chris found me. So Kiri and I met at Toyota. We both worked there. We started talking at Toyota and it was just like, you like Supros? No way, like, we're, we're best friends now. And like, it was just hilarious. He told me about this one that actually was close by to my house. The guy was selling it on Craigslist. So I needed some love. I offered him 13,000 for it and he took it. It's just kind of like run down and like, mix math wheels on it, you know, and it was just like, it was cool, it was like a starting point, and then and it was, and, it, was, and it, it really turned into something crazy. I just wanted to clean it up, fix everything on it, fix the paint, just make it simple for the time being, and just enjoy it and drive it. I think it was a year or two later, at that point, every little imperfection that I had, all cleaned up and fixed, and... I had gotten a random message from a friend of a totaled black car. And I'm just like, why am I getting this? Like, what, what is that? And I couldn't even tell what kind of car it was. It was hit so hard. And I'm like looking at it harder and I'm like, that's like my old work parking lot. That's a Supra. And I'm like, no way. It was a little wet out. I didn't have the best tires. I took it out, was going home from work. The back end kicked out on me, spun around, did a 360 and I hit a median on the highway, hit the front, hit the back a little bit. The insurance totaled it. I was pretty upset. You would be pretty upset. <laughs> the two months that I took of deciding what I was gonna do with it, I was pretty down. There was a point where I just wanted to not even deal with it, not have one like ever again, just cause I just, if this thing happened again to me, I don't know what I would do. I just said, well, I'm here now. I'm gonna do it right the first time and just be done with it each step. I'm just gonna get a donor car. I put a new front end on it. It's already stripped. So I painted it, did the LFA blue on it. So it's a non-turbo block with the VVTI head, mainly rods, CP pistons, got the head built, has oversized valves, Titanium springs and retainers, Kelford cams, 76, 75 from Garrett with precision housings, straight pipe exhaust. And then I swapped out to the V160 trans, recently did the four nine inch conversion. Even the smallest of details of even bolts, dress up bolts, even the littlest tiniest detail like that does make me happy for this build. So it's still a pretty fresh build it's only about 10 pounds of boost. It's currently making 500 to the wheels. So he is just on a base tune on a big single, so like making it like 500. Um, Supra is like even 600 nowadays isn't even that much, but in reality, it, you know, you, you know it is. So I want to be around like 600 to 800, which what I've had on the drivetrain, I think that's pretty safe. And I just really, just want to enjoy the car. Yeah. 
so Chris here at Night Run Garage helped me out a lot. Uh, me and Ben Willis started this about a year ago. Supra and Toyota Lexus specialist, yeah. I, just kind of like specializing and like focusing on one car and doing it nice and doing it right. He helped me a lot with the car itself. He helped me swap the V160 in, helped me with wiring. Even when he was down in Virginia and I'm in PA, we were over the phone. You know, I was down here at the time, just working and everything, so I wasn't really um, involved as much as I could have been, unfortunately. At, you know, the weekends I would come up to Pennsylvania and visit and everything, I'd help him out, um, figuring out a problem, the car wouldn't start or, or this or that, um, just getting the car buttoned up. You think you could do something by yourself, but even all the little things that your family and friends can help you with really just brings the car together. And that's probably what really special this car with me from building it was because without them, this wouldn't be what it is. Because of all the late nights, all the times that I would just call them and like last minute things like, oh, can we trailer this there? Can you work on this late night? Can you weld this for me tonight? Kurt, that helped me out with all the welding. Like 10 o'clock in the morning till like two o'clock at night, he would be out there welding. It's just crazy how friends just help you out unconditionally. There's so much more to it than just the car itself. Half the time it's not even about the car, it's about having fun with your friends, like doing it and going out and, and meeting up and if you're str you know, stuck or stranded or you know, just kind of like pulling your hair out. At that point where the accident happened and everybody that helped me out to put this car back together, you know, you can't really put a price on that. Doesn't matter, somebody called for me 200,000 for it. I would probably turn it down just because of how the memories of building the car. I don't know. It's just more than a super to me.